many, many issues and layers of importance here, I guess, that we could ex explore. What are the lessons that Australia can learn in our democracy and the lessons that the US should be learning as well from how this has transpired and, and the, the broader context around the political debate right now? Kieran, these are big cultural challenges and they're ones that are only going to get harder as we enter the age of artificial intelligence. And I describe them as cultural challenges because no single legal framework or government action is going to be able to ensure that what people see and read online and through social media platforms is universally accurate or reliable. And so it actually comes to ensuring uh, that our populations, our electorates, uh, and indeed those of us who promote information are as attuned as possible to going to trusted and verified sources of information. Uh, your profession uh, is more important than ever in terms of credible, responsible journalism, uh, how you curate information, how you validate that information, and how you ensure that it is projected in a way that is as accurate as possible, but then that we also ensure through all aspects of our education mm. system and elsewhere, we are teaching people the importance of getting that information from trusted, credible sources. We still want uh, there to be competition uh, in our media market. We, of course, want there to be innovation. Uh, we want there to be different voices because that is how we have a truly functioning democracy. Uh, but we also need to make sure uh, that ethical, trusted voices uh, are at the forefront uh, of yeah. our debate uh, and the way in which people form their decisions. This event yesterday, and it was a tragedy and, and our thoughts are, of, of course, with those wounded and, and killed, the, in one individual, a firefighter from Pennsylvania who was, who was killed as he was guarding his family there as the shots rang out. And so I, I don't mean to diminish that tragedy, but this could have been a lot worse, uh, millimetres away from the presumptive nominee being killed, the former president being assassinated. It, it, it certainly could have had much more profound consequences in terms of the US election and the direction potentially of history uh, and how all of these events unfold. So, as I said, it clearly, clearly was a tragedy and with tragic consequences. Uh, and the assault on democracy is itself a tragedy as well, and it should be seen very much as an assault on the democratic process uh, for uh, a presidential nominee uh, to be targeted for an assassination attempt. Uh, uh, ultimately, the US election will now unfold uh, with this looming over it, uh, but still with much debate to be had uh, on their domestic issues, those matters that are ones entirely for the American electorate to decide between former President Trump, President Biden, or indeed any other nominee that, uh, that may uh, surface depending on those other debates happening in the US. But from an Australian perspective, there are a couple of things that remain of paramount concern. And that is that we, uh, as a country, maintain the special relationship, the strength of the alliance and the ability to work with whomever the US people elect as their president. And then more broadly, that we, together with other democratic nations, continue to work with the US and whoever they elect to ensure they remain engaged with the rest of the world, continue to play a leading and leadership role with the rest of the world. The last thing uh, we can afford to see or would wish to see is an isolationist America. And we want to see an America that works alongside those democracies who all came together at NATO last week mm. to stand up with the types of principles and rules that underpin the way our country operates and are so important to the way the world maintains peace and stability. Just finally, as we look at those images, you reflect on the various um, elements to this and we do have a lot of things in common with the US. We have things that are very different and one is the gun the gun culture or the scourge of guns in the United States. Do we have to factor that in here as well, that that really, that illness that the US has in terms of its, uh, its use and the spread, the number of guns, the easy acquisition of guns in that country? 
We share much in common as countries in terms of uh, democratic traditions and the and the uh, extreme um, priority we put on the protection of those democratic freedoms and values. But the, some of the differences we have, uh, and one of the greatest is absolutely the gun culture. And after the initial shock of the news and the footage uh, passed yesterday morning, uh, one of the first things that came to my mind, as I'm sure it was so many other Australians, was thank God we don't have that type of gun culture uh, thankfully, we yeah. have the gun laws that the Howard government put in place after Port Arthur. Uh, mm. It is uh, a, a real benefit to our nation in terms of what it means for gun violence, for domestic violence, uh, as well as for uh, the possibility of these types of political assassination attempts. And whilst yeah. we are not immune from terrorism, we're not immune from violence, uh, we are in a better place thanks to those sorts of laws and, uh, and we should be very grateful for it. Mm. Yeah, we are indeed, and to credit again, as we as we always mention to the former prime minister for the leadership he took, uh, and the nationals leader at the time as well. I know played a big part in that, Tim Fisher. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Simon Birmingham. Absolutely. Thanks.